I'm Sam. And I'm Hannah. And we're from the Restore Congregation. And this is Esme. We're going to do the reading this morning. So today's reading is taken from Isaiah 42, verse 5 to 6, from the Message Translation. God's message. The God who created the cosmos stretched out the skies, laid out the earth and all that grows from it, who breathes life into earth's people, makes them alive with his own life. I am God. I have called you to live right and well. I have taken responsibility for you, kept you safe. I have set you among my people to bind them to me and provided you as a lighthouse to the nations. And I'm going to pray for Jodie now. Uh, Lord, thank you for Jodie. Uh, thank you for the word that she has to bring to us. I pray that you'll bless her this morning and I pray that you will bless us and give us ears to hear and hearts to receive. In your name, Amen. 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 Thank you, Sam, Hannah and Esme. Um, I take that cry as an, a cry of Amen. Uh, <laughs> but Sal Bonner, uh, this morning I see you. Um, it's been, just before I kind of get into this morning's word, um, it's been overwhelming just to see the sheer number of people just now named on the chat and the number of key workers that are in our families, in our church family, those we know and care and love for. And um, just really brought it home how how much of an impact this season is having, this, this last year and this year is having on, on each one of us. And so just want to say we're standing together. Let's keep praying, as Raynard said, keep praying uh, for those we know and love and even those we don't know uh, who are on the front line from council workers uh, to cleaners to teachers to key workers and uh, NHS and front line and it goes on and on and on and just praying for those people and holding them close at this moment. And this morning we are in our third and final Sunday of our 21 days of wellness. And uh, really, I've really enjoyed these the past two weeks and this, I'm looking forward to this week coming up and just how we've been able to kind of take stock and usually this time of year, we would do 21 days of prayer and fasting, but we really felt God uh, speak to us last kind of October when we were thinking about this year, about 21 days of wellness. And I'm so thankful to God uh, that he goes before us and goes ahead of us and knows what we need before we even know it. We had no idea we would be in another lockdown. We had no idea uh, that it, this one would be harder than the rest. I don't know if it's just me. I'll talk on that a bit later, but... This one feels tougher, doesn't it? And God knew that. And he's like, 21 days of wellness. Worship me. Spend time with me and be well in me. And I'm just so thankful to God that he has spoken to us and gone before us. So I just want to praise him and thank him for that. And we based our 21 days in some verses from Isaiah. Isaiah 42, verses 5 and 6. And this is what God the Lord says who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and its offspring, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will also hold you by the hand and watch over you. And I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations." Now remember these verses that Isaiah spoke when he, the prophet Isaiah spoke these out to the people of Israel. They were in a really tough time. Uh, they had been exiled from there. They were, no longer had access to their land. They didn't have access to their temple. They were questioning who they were as a people. They were questioning who God was. And into that moment, Isaiah spoke these words. And I just find that incredible that he spoke about, you know, these are the things right now. I know you're hurting. I know things are tough. I know you're not understanding everything. I know there's fear and confusion and doubt. To be honest, he could have been speaking it to us right now in 2021. And I love the flow of, of what Isaiah says in these verses, how he speaks about the bigness of God. Remember that the first week we talked about the bigness of God and how important it is that we focus and recapture our wonder of who God is. Recapture the wonder of who God is. To start with the wow. To start with wow. The God who created the universe. To look at the bigness of God and remember he is sovereign over all. He is majestic. He is holy. He's the creator of heaven and earth. And just recapture that wonder of him who created life. And then to breathe his life in. 
his spirit, to, to have his spirit fill us up and start in that place and to focus on him. And then in the second week, last week, we looked at how important it is to reconnect in healthy friendships. And uh, Reinhardt taught, taught us that word, Salbona, which so many of us have caught on to this week. And it's been so much fun just starting emails and starting conversations and meetings online with Salbona. And not because it's a gimmick or you know, anything like that, because we really want to say, I see you. And to say that to one another, to say, I see you. I want to connect. I want to live well and, and right with you and in a healthy friendship. And so I see you. I exist for you. And that's been great. And I want us to carry on with that, that our friendships aren't transactional. And Reynard talked a lot about that. And if you missed it last week, please, please, please go back and watch last week's. How we can have friendships that are non-transactional. They're about bringing the best out of other people, seeing all that they are come to be, all that God created them to be. And then that leads us into this week, the, the final week of our 21 days, where we're focusing on generosity and being generous. Now, generosity is a huge subject <laughs> and there is lots to say on it. And we will not get it all done in 20 minutes this morning. So I'm going to zoom in our focus and think about generosity in the context of these verses from Isaiah and in the context of our wellness and how generosity impacts our wellness. And that's what we'll be looking at this morning. And, and then this week, as we go ahead, the daily videos uh, will help with the kind of practical application of that. How do we be generous in our everyday life, wherever we find ourselves with whoever we find ourselves with? And so I want to encourage you to kind of lock into those daily videos videos and, and work it out practically. But let's just remind ourselves of the verse when it was in the message version and just going to read that to us now. God's message, the God who created the cosmos, stretched out the skies, laid out the earth and all that grows from it, who breathes life into earth's people, makes them alive with his own life. I am God. I've called you to live right and well. I've taken responsibility for you, kept you safe. I've set you among my people to bind them to me and provided you as a lighthouse to the nations. That phrasing, a lighthouse to the nations, like with scattered church bringing light to the nation. And I'm reminded of when Jesus said in Matthew 5.15, he said, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl or a bushel, Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. And it went, he went on to say this, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And for me, that's what generosity is about. It's, it's with no hidden agenda. And the interns spoke about that in the video. It's with no hidden agenda, without any expectation of anything in return. Kind of giving wholeheartedly not expecting anything to come back. Not even in terms of it impacting our wellness, like a hidden agenda, I'm going to do this because it's going to make me feel good. Now, research does say that being generous does impact our wellness, that being generous has a huge impact on our health and our relationships, that it lowers our stress, um, it improves our happiness and all those sorts of things. And that when we give generously, especially when that giving comes with a sacrifice, we're choosing to value something beyond our own comforts, beyond our own desires. And that has a huge impact on our well-being, our wellness. And I saw this, it says, generosity is acting on a vision of life that is not all about us. Generosity is acting on a vision of life that is not all about us. And I don't know about you, but I've found, like I said, this lockdown harder than any of the others. I don't know. I think it's a combination of things. I think it's winter. Um, what Reynard thought was rain earlier when he was praying was actually snow coming down. It's dark. It's cold. <laughs> He's just found that out. Uh, it's dark. It's cold. You know, it's, it's another lockdown. There's more illness than before. There's more death. It just feels like everybody we know knows has been some impact of COVID on their lives and it just feels more intense and more serious and there's a weariness about us as well and I found it really hard these last few weeks 
And if I'm honest, and I'm going to be, but if I'm honest, I, I've done a bit of navel gazing. I've done a little bit of woe is me in moments. I've, it can get really tiresome and tedious and a little bit sad to eat three meals a day on your own every day, day after day after day. And if I'm not careful, and I know I'm not the only one doing that, and if I'm not careful, I can get a woe is me attitude. Now, I think it's okay to have a sad moment. I think that's really healthy to acknowledge this is not right. This isn't how it should be. And that's okay. And I'm not saying we ignore those feelings, but something about focusing then on generosity and having a vision of life that is not about me takes me out of that moment, helps me move through that moment. And giving from that mindset really does bring joy. You know, generous givers, we say, you know, are content people, often humble people, grateful people. And it's not about being generous because it makes us feel good. That's not what I'm trying to say, that if you do this, you'll feel great. Often we do, because you get to see the impact it has on someone life, someone's life. But I think being generous is more than that. It makes us feel good because it's who we're designed to be. It's what we were made for. When you think about it, God is a generous God. You know, Jehovah Jireh, he is the provider. That's one of his names. And not, not just of finance, but of all things, of love. And, and Matt said it in the video. This went, he, also, one of my favorite verses, 1 John 3. For God so loved, <laughs> our Father lavished his love upon us. We're called children of God. He lavished his love upon us. Lavished, kind of. And I've spoken about this word before, but that's without measure. And like Matt said, it's like just spreading it on thick. Without measure. And God so loved the world, we're told in John 3, 16, that he gave, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. God is a generous God. We cannot argue with that. He is a generous God. And we, you and me, are made in his image. We're made in the image of a generous God. And when we've Breathed in his life, his spirit is within us. That spirit of generosity is within us. And so generosity is about more than doing good and being good and feeling good about it. It's about stepping into who we were made to be and welcoming in that spirit of generosity. And all these three aspects of the 21 days of wellness, worship, you know, starting with the wow, friendship, being in healthy relationship with one another and generosity, you know, we have been made to do all those things. We were created to worship God. We were created to be in relationship. We're made to be generous and bless others. And so it totally makes sense that when we are having those things in our life and focusing on those three things, worship, friendship, generosity, that it would have an impact on our wellness. Because we're living out and living in our original design. Everything kind of lines up, like, ah, oh, this is what I was made for. I don't know if you've ever had a moment where you've done something, maybe a skill or a talent, I don't know, or you've been in a situation and go, huh, this is what I was made for. And it's like that with worship and friendship and generosity. It's what we're made for. And there's just an ease to that that just brings wellness. And so within the lockdown context, I'm not saying to ignore or minimise the tough times we're in and the tough emotions we're facing. Those are real. And like we looked at in the Jesus way, we need to process those and work through, acknowledge them and journey through. We don't want to stay there. Don't want to stay in those, in those tough emotions and moments. And I was reading this week about um, grounding techniques. And for those who work with children with special needs or adults with special needs, or know about mental well-being and emotional well-being. Sometimes when you need to be present in the moment, there's a kind of a, a grounding that you can hold yourself and hug yourself to ground yourself in the moment. Some of our health professionals will know more about this than me. I just read it on the internet. But I feel like the worship and the friendship 
and the generosity are like grounding moments, bringing me back to who I'm made to be. When it feels like everything else is chaotic and spiraling out of control, and I have a tendency to focus on myself, I ground myself in worshipping God. The God who created the cosmos, who laid out the starry skies and the earth and everything in it. To connect in healthy friendship and to be generous. It's where true health is. And if we, if we don't do those things, it's almost like it's toxic. Because we're not living out that original design of who we're made to be. And in 2020, 2021, we have been truly made to be a scattered church. When you think about that lighthouse to the nations phrase. And I think it's a real moment in time for us to shine the light. God's spirit, his kingdom around us. To rebuild community through generosity. Rebuild community through generosity. And I think it rebuilds community because we're taking his spirit into the places where we are, to the people we connect with. You know, when we're filled with his spirit, the Holy Spirit, there's fruit of the spirit. Let's see if I can remember them. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. Did I get them all? I, you can tell me on the chat if I missed one, I'm sorry. Um, it's a long time since I've gone through those. But those are the things when we've got the spirit of, in us. When we're talking about being generous with our lives, it's those things, isn't it, that spill out. The spirit of God. Choosing not to focus on myself, but beyond that. And those of you who know me and know what I do in day to day, not only um, work for Restore, but also beyond ourselves. And beyond ourselves, we work uh, in education in Zambia, um, facilitating and developing literacy training um, now more than anything. But we chose the name Beyond Ourselves, not just because we thought it's cheesy, but it's cool, <laughs> um, but to remind ourselves that we are having a vision for life that doesn't focus on us. We're choosing to be generous, to live beyond ourselves, to do what it says on the tin, to not be people who go after what we want in life and what's going to make me feel good and what make the culture says I should have and be and do, but actually go after the things of God to be generous with our lives, to be generous. It came out of our family business. That's how it started, to be generous with the profits of the business, to be generous with the skills and gifts and talents we had. I'm, I was a professional teacher, trained teacher. Dan is a trained teacher. To use those gifts for the kingdom, to, to be generous with those gifts, to use what we have in our hand, to go beyond ourselves. And, you know, in Matthew, Jesus tells us it's more blessed to give than receive. And I don't need to tell you that. That's more blessed to give than receive. We know that. And again, that's not why we do it. And that proverb that just came up there, whoever brings blessing will be enriched and one who waters will himself be watered. And when we're generous, when we're stepping into generosity being a light in the darkness, and these are dark times. We're called to be a light. There's something that happens, and I, again, I don't truly understand it. It's the generosity of God that when, when we water others, when we bless others, when we're generous to others, we ourselves get watered. And we've got the watering cans up behind me. You know, we don't just pluck visual design and set design out of, out of nowhere. There's a lot of work and talk that goes into it. And the heart of, kind of having those watering cans, reminding us that when we, and just hanging over the chair there, when we sit in, in the presence of God, when we worship him, when we worship him, when we're in, in good relationship with others, when we're generous to others, there's something about it watering us. And there's a wellness in that. And not only... Does being generous mean we step in to who we're made to be? But I think also it makes us, it contributes to our wellness. It makes us feel good because we're joining in the purposes of God. I don't know if you've ever done something 
out of a, a generosity where God's nudged you. We talk a lot about the nudge, the Holy Spirit nudge, where you've been nudged and you do something generous or say something generous or generous with your time. And you know you've joined in the purposes of God. You know that God is at work. And there is no greater feeling, I don't think, than knowing you are slap bang in the middle of God at work. There is nothing like it to go, whoa, that was a heaven meets earth moment. And I am right in the middle of it. Not because of how great I am, but because God's so great. And there is something about that. So when we're, the spirit of generosity isn't doing good for good's sake. It's worshipping God, you know, worshipping him, having him as our focus, being in relationship with others. And then hearing from God, how can I be generous? How can I be generous? And so out throughout this week and throughout 2021, maybe, but particularly this week, let's be thinking, how can I be generous to others? How can I be a blessing? How can I water others this week? How can I be a light in the darkness? How can I be generous with others in the everyday, taking them into my heart? How can I be generous with my time or my money or my skills? How can I be generous to our community? Shining a light wherever God's put us. And maybe you're sat here this morning thinking, I don't think I've got anything to give. And I want to say that's not true. It's not true. You have so much to give. Because God is generous and he's been generous towards you. It's about our heart and our attitude. It can even be a a smile of generosity. And I'm not saying that to minimise it. There have been moments. You know, I'm sure you have had moments where someone has smiled at you with a a heart of generosity, a heart of I see you, Salbon moment. And it changes things. You know, think about the widow's might, the story Jesus tells Two pennies, that's all she gave. But it wasn't about what she had, it was about her heart and her attitude. And so maybe you've only got five minutes this week of time spare because you've got the kids in the house and they're doing school online and you've got to work as well and you've got this person to care for and this Maybe you've only got five minutes. That's okay. Maybe you've only got five words to say to someone, that's okay. It's about our spirit of generosity, a vision of life that's not about me. And it means that even in the tough times, we can journey through because we shift our focus. Yes, we need to process our emotions and feelings and some of us, and I wanna say this very honestly, some of us, we may need to speak to our doctor or speak to a counselor because things are really, really tough, and that's okay to ask for help. But let's journey through this time in worship, in good friendship, and with generosity. You know, there's, um, just before Christmas, I um, went round with some of our leadership team in the Enfield Winchmore Hill area, and we gave some flowers, some poinsettia, I never know quite how to say it, poinsettia, poinsettia plants to uh, all of our church family in in Enfield and Winchmore Hill. And I had three left over. And I thought at that time, um, pre tier four, I thought I'd be away for Christmas. So there was was no point me having plants in my house. Turns out tier four came down and I was stuck at home, but that's another story. Um, But I had these three plants and I didn't, so I asked God, I said, God, who, who can I give them to? It's not a big deal, it was three plants. But that heart of generosity, who can this bless? Who can I water today? Who can I bring light to today? And God dropped three names into my head, into my heart. And I was like, really? That's an odd group of people to be giving these to. Two of them were from uh, my kind of dog walking crew, old, older people who I happened to bump into when I walked the dog. And one was uh, my neighbor at the other end of my fence and at the bottom of my garden. And so she's a Christian, the other two are not. And so I went round and I knocked on the door and I offered the plant to the, the Christian lady's husband. She was out and uh, he was really moved by it and really touched. And then uh, she came round uh, the next day 
and was so overwhelmed by the fact that someone had thought of her and someone had considered giving her a plant. Only a plant, not a big deal. And that conversation grew and we're committed that when we can meet together, we're going to pray for our neighbourhood together. She's not from Restore, but she does know Jesus. And I just feel that's the purposes of God, that's something there that's going to go on to bless just from a plant. We've agreed to get together to pray together. The other two, not Christians, um, in, in fact, so far from knowing God and wanting to know God, um, it's laughable in some ways. And so I um, went to drop off plants to them as well. And they both, again, so moved that someone would consider them and be generous towards them. It was a plant. It cost me a couple of quid. Honestly. But God had given me those names. God is at work in their lives. And I just stepped into that and brought light in the darkness. And they still talk about it now. And so I want to encourage you. It might feel like the widows might. It feel like just a plant or just a word or just this. In the spirit of God, as God breathes life into it, it changes things. It brings light to the nations. So let's be that light church. Let's bring in that spirit of generosity. This week, like I said, the videos will give us practical ideas on how to do that. But talk to God about it. Ask God, God, what do I have? Will you show me how I can bless others, how I can water others, how I can be a light to others? And be bold, be courageous and step into it. I don't know if you watched the inauguration this week, but Amanda Gorman, uh, the young, young poet laureate or the youth poet laureate, the, the youngest poet to ever give a poem at the inauguration, was incredible. And I would encourage you to go and listen to her, but a few of the, her lines just jumped out at me and this one felt appropriate for this morning. She said, there is always light if only we are brave enough to see it, if only we are brave enough to be it. And that's my heart and my prayer for us this morning, that we would see the light that we have because of God. We'd be brave enough to see it and, and step out of our darkness to, to go and be it to others. So why don't we pray together now as we head into worship and respond to God. Father God, thank you that you are a generous God. Thank you that you are our provider in all things. You've given us the very breath in our lungs, the very life we live. And Father, I pray that we might be a generous people. Lord, that we would step into the spirit of generosity. Lord, that we might be a light and lighthouses to our nation. Lord, in this dark time. Lord, that we would have a vision for life that goes beyond us. Lord, that we might step into who we've been created to be. We might step into your purposes and where you're at work. Father, would you show us how to be generous in this season. Would you show us how to bless others in this season? And Father, thank you that your word is true and your promises are true, that as we water, we will be watered. And so Father, I want to pray a blessing over us all in Jesus' name. Amen.